Hey y'all, this is Mark. I uh, was traveling on the streets of Jerusalem. I saw this church that looks like uh, really awesome looking and you know, you got the towers and everything. It's really nice. And I said, uh, I want to go in, check it out, see what it looks like, you know. Um, it's now a hotel. But they had this interesting display in here and I want to show it to you okay there's buses out here uh, I guess they want to go but um, uh, I want to show you basically what is in here they have a display and the hotel is up the other way but this is part of the hotel still this is a little place you go into and very unique okay so they have things about the Lord about Jesus but it's more than that it's it's about the shroud so it's talking about the shroud we're going up there's some steps here go up go up go around talks about the Shroud of Turin. I don't know if you know about the Shroud of Turin, but it's a relic. Um, some people thought it was from the medieval times, and you know, nobody's 100% sure, only, the, only Jesus, of course. And uh, there's an ancient picture of it. They show the burial cloth of Jesus. So there's skeptics, there's believers, there's... Uh, you know, maybe it's real, maybe it's not, but it's interesting. Here's something here. They didn't realize, they used to think it was a painting. They used to think that they painted it on. And, you know, but then modern technology, 1800s modern technology, uh, it was photographed in May 9, 1898 for the first time by Secondo Pia, an enthusiastic amateur photographer that's interesting i didn't know that he was an amateur photographer he's like hey why don't i just take a picture of this i take pictures you know here's the old camera right here this is the man he's very distinguished looking and there's the picture of course small here's jesus picture the face you see the positive image of course uh, old times you know, not like digital, you, you, you get the negative. So, you notice the negative, the image is a little clearer, but it's more of a, of what it really looked like. It's like, oh, well, this doesn't look right. This is the picture. This is the positive. This is the negative. A little celluloid, I think they call it and it's more of an image it's like that doesn't make any sense here's the back you can see like whip marks on it and everything it's very detailed uh here's a bigger picture of it of course it's it's a long cloth just like this other picture over here where they folded it over so it's Front and back, one piece. This, the actual cloth is in Turin, Italy. Torino. Torino is the modern name. The uh, medieval name was Turin. So here's a bigger picture up here. It's almost as tall as I am. It's up, up there. You go up, up higher. You know, and we don't worship these things, but it's very interesting, very interesting. They found pollen on the shroud. These are the flowers that they found the pollen on. And these are the areas in Israel, this is Israel, where you find this pollen. And Jerusalem's about right here where all this pollen is. Now the garment, was made and they didn't make it for Jesus they just made it and then they used it on they had tons of them they used them to bury people so 
Here's more about the the uh, pollen, the, the you know, scientist, Professor Avinoimdani. You know, here's dried out specimens of the po of the of the actual plants where the pollen came from. So the the cloth is definitely. And it goes even more and more scientific over here. I took a picture of it, so I'll study that later. Of uh, the authenticity of, of the shroud. So it's really amazing. There's a lot to speak of. They see the blood on the crown, his head even sharper. The, the image is darker where the fabric was touching the face, touching. And it's lighter where it would be like not touching. So it would be darker wherever it would rest. And it's a scorch. It, it's a literal scorch. You can, you can take a razor blade and scrape it. Now this actual cloth is behind closed doors. And they only bring it out like every many decades. And, uh, and they have here, they show the cat of nine tails and how it matches on the, on the shroud. Here's all the marks that you can see. Some strokes were backhanded as evidenced by the marks on the back. That's interesting. You got backhanded marks, not just forehand strokes. You've got backhanded strokes. So I don't know if you're seeing all this, but spread fan-like, and then you can see the back. So here is a life-size, this is special. This is only, this is the third, I'm just looking here, I don't know if that's fabric. It looks like it's on fabric, I don't know what this is. But this is like a closest replica that they come up with, they have, they have the one in Turin that they show to everybody because they don't show the whole, they don't show the real thing because the light and they don't want to get destroyed. And you can see it went through a fire, so this got burnt right here. Uh, and it matches because it was folded when it got burnt. It got a little burnt on the edges, got burnt here, got burnt here. You're missing, it matches because it was folded, like I said, burn, 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 burnt. Okay, burned on the edges. And you can barely see it. It looks like a watermark. And here's his head facing. And here's the back of the head. So you fold it right here around the body. And there's his head. And there's the back of his head. You've got stains of blood on the actual garment. Now you could say, maybe it was just some guy, you know, that, that got, got crucified. Well, they usually didn't scourge like this and crucify because that killed people jesus survived that and, and peter wanted to, i mean uh, Pilate wanted to release him but the people said no we want to crucify him okay let's hurry up this is kind of getting long but it's very interesting shows how he how the victim would go up and down he would go back and forth yeah, you got uh, snails going through the hand. It shows how the, the, the spear goes through the heart, the back of the foot, what that would look like, much blood because of the, that's the one resting on the, um, okay, you may have seen something, but I'll show you in just a minute, which is very fascinating. But uh, the climax of all this. And, you know, like I said, it could be just anybody, but the way it's done, the, the, he was scourged before he was crucified, um, and it's and it's light uh, light burnt this. It's like light came forth. Like when Jesus resurrected, the Bible doesn't say, but if 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 Jesus resurrected in this cloth, this is the way it happened. Light came out, and he came alive. He you know his body came alive. He's always alive, but his body was dead. So he he because he's the Prince of Life. And so here we go. Example of crucifixion nails right here. You can see by the size of my hand. These are the whips, all 
main. Here is an example of the thorns. The, the thorns, there's the thorns right there, here. Um, they go to the coins, what the coins look like. There's two different coins that they placed on his eyes. One's here, and one's here. It's not even on his eye. So if you're going to do an artistic beautification in the Middle Ages, you're not going to make a mistake like that. You know, and this is like very scientific. It's showing how the eyes match up and stuff. I don't know, um, with some paintings. Because they, the they took the cloth and they made pictures of Jesus by the cloth, by what the cloth looked like. Of course, they're dealing with the negative. They didn't even know it was a negative. And uh, more scientific evidence. Here's another uh, more 3D. They've, they've computerized his image. And I've even seen on TV where they show what he would look like, his face. And I was hoping to see if they would have that, but that's probably exclusive rights done by the people who did that because they made a documentary and everything like that. But they do have like a 3D image. I don't know if you can see that uh, here. You know, it's like um, you don't need the glasses, but it's kind of like if you had, you know, went to the, went to the uh, movies and you see a 3D image there. But here's the creme de la creme. <laughs> uh, they made a metal image of the body. I don't know if this is the body of Jesus. We're not worshiping it. This is not to be worshiped. The shroud of Turin is not to be worshiped. Jesus is to be worshiped. But it's so fascinating. When I first saw this, I said, I got to make, I got to make a video of this. This is so amazing. You can see, and there's nobody here, <laughs> and you can touch it. And it's, it's just, there's the nail prints. Jesus, it's, it's so awe-inspiring. You know, Cat and I tells us, do, 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 do. This was a cloth, and that's the thing about the, about the shroud, too. It's, it's, it's 3D. It's literally 3D. So they made a 3D model of him. Look, that's his biceps. They're bigger than mine. He was a strong man. Whoever this is, don't know if, it's, if it was Jesus, but if it is Jesus, wow. Because he had the crown of thorns. They don't make crown of thorns for everybody. No, they just did it for Jesus. They didn't stick him in the, in the, in the side like that. This is, he was uniquely scourged, then crucified. Blood running. Wow. The price he paid. Like I said, if it's not real, if it's not real, it's not real. But if it is real, blows your mind. So there he is. And I'm not even getting a lot of it. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, I'm looking more at the at the uh, the actual image, you know. Now I'm looking at the camera so I can show you. <laughs> that is amazing. Where is the eyes? There's like a trickle of blood here. The nose. If you go go if you take the shroud flat, you don't see all this. It's a uh, it, it, his nose is much broader because the because of the way the the cloth is one uh 2d i guess the uh, cloth is 3d but it's not 3d like this so it's 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 basically one dimension or length width but not depth uh so we get the depth here it's amazing like under here under under his beard his neck it's a sculptor made this of course cast it and it is just amazing his knees are all bloodied you know if this isn't real then it, it, it's a replica it's a duplication of what he did you know his knees were bloody you knew his his feet were uh, uh, pierced his hands and his feet were pierced psalm 22 uh you know he was he died among you know that's where his heart was. Wow. Don't know if it's real. 
But I know the Jesus that's here is real. That's the main thing. Jesus is alive. That's just a relic. That's just a representation of what he did and, and how he died for us. And, and, you know, he crucified. You know, we don't think of, we don't want to think about it too much. Some people, you know, it, it, uh, it's very emotional because of the pain and the sorrow that he took. But he was a man of sorrows. He died for us so that we could live. He took everything. He took all the pain. He took everything that we go through in this life. And he bore it on him so that we can share in his life, in his resurrection power, in his glory. We get to live for him forevermore. Not to believe that this is the shroud, not to, that it's the real shroud of Jesus, not to believe that that sculpture is really the, the 3D model of Jesus, but to believe that he came, the word was made flesh and dwelt among men. And so that's what's really real. And that not only that, that he became, God became man, but also that God can forgive us. God can forgive you of everything you've done. Paul, he said, I'm chief of sinners. He was the worst. So you've not sinned as much as Paul the Apostle or when he was Saul, when he was killing Christians and blaspheming God. So Jesus has life and he's here for you right where you are listening to this video, watching this. Amen. It's amazing. God is real. Jerusalem has so many amazing things here. Some things they go overboard. People go overboard. They worship things they, they, they shouldn't. And you only worship God. Only worship God. And so if this, is, if this is all a farce, it doesn't matter to me because I know that he's here. He's alive here. And I died with him on the cross because when I gave my heart to him, I died. And the new man came. And uh, he's wonderful. So live for Jesus. Ask him to come into your heart, forgive you, because your life will never be the same because you'll have new life. You'll have God's life. He died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, or of God, and he is here for us now to live for him forevermore. Amen. God bless you.